Hello everyone. My name is Mike Prasad and I'm a professional emergency manager. I've held director level positions at the American Red Cross in the state of New Jersey in emergency management. I'm a planner and a mass care expert, mostly on very large scale disasters. I was on the Red Cross command leadership teams for Hurricanes Irene, Sandy, Michael, Harvey, Irma, Maria, and Ida. And I now help FEMA as a Red Cross volunteer at their, Red, at their Regional Response Coordination Center, supporting big disasters in New Jersey, New York, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. No, I don't get to travel to those spots, nor do I really want to, but all of this is done from sites in New Jersey. I'm in private practice right now, consulting for groups and organizations on how emergency management can help solve their disaster-related problems. So today I'm going to cover what emergency management should be all about, and hopefully less than 30 minutes. There's obviously a lot more to this, but the focus is to provide grassroots, civic and community groups with actionable next steps, which you can do as an organization and as individuals and families to be more disaster resilient or disaster ready. From my perspective, this will work best if two things happen. First, everyone needs to look at threats and hazards holistically since everyone can become adversely impacted by them. And then there are no real special teams to solve for big or small disasters like wildfires or blizzards. So effectively, when you can make your community better prepared for a winter storm, you should make your community better prepared for any type of threat or hazard. And second, there are others who want to do the same thing. Really, there are good people out there who want to make it better for everyone, especially for those who cannot do this all on their own. You probably know many of them. I bet some of you are them as well and how they can help you and your neighboring communities every day. They are doing this for chronic disasters such as poverty, homelessness, racism, and other bad things which happen every day everywhere. Some of them are in government, some, some in, in private corporations, corporations, some in faith-based organizations, civics groups, and other non-governmental organizations. Everyone can have a role in making disasters a little bit better for someone else. Today we're going to spell out the acronym COAD, C-O-A-D, and this is somewhat of an interactive part of the webinar. The first letter is C for community. If you can, please add some keywords into the notes or wherever you're, you're keeping track of things you can think of when you think of what community represents when it comes to disasters. What are some of the things you need your community to do to help others when disasters strike? Here are some of the items I could think of. Things like shelter advocacy, education, knowledge, mental health, support, evacuations, transportation assistance, training, funding, feeding, power, even blood. And I mentioned blood specifically because there's something that's something you can't buy. And when something happens like a disaster, you need volunteers, you need the community to step up and provide blood. So that's the kind of an example of things I'm thinking of, how we can support, how can we can support our pets, how we support our families, our families with disabilities and access and functional needs. These are the types of things that I believe we all hope to get from our respective, respective communities. The C can also represent county and can have members which are both governmental and non-governmental organizations, including corporations and for-profit entities, usually associated with a sub-jurisdiction within a state or ter territory, such as a county in New York or a parish in Louisiana. At the state and tribal and territorial national level, the umbrella organization is a VOAD, Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters. And those are both part of the National VOAD Movement, or NVOAD, which is the umbrella group for all the VOADs in the United States. I'm a board member of the New Jersey State VOAD and have been involved with them since 2010. Let's talk about some of those organizations at the community or county level. Who are they and what can they do when it comes to disasters? So while you're thinking of the other groups in your community, first a graphic from FEMA. It, it describes, describes the disaster phases and how government thinks communities move through them. We, we hope to always be in the preparedness phase, and that's where the protection and prevention aspects, aspects reside as well. But when disasters strike, we call them incidents, be it a blizzard, an earthquake, a tornado, or a horrific mass murder at a grocery store. This, this is, is how we organize in emergency management. Notice how the phases overlap. 
While a community is still in the response phase, they need to start to recover, for example. And don't think only of the response phase of disaster incidents when it comes to community organizations. Many of these groups provide recovery support post-response. Some do prevention and protection work and help individuals and families be better prepared themselves to respond to a disaster. Other focus, others focus on recovery as their primary role. At the county and major city level, many of the same groups who support chronic, chronic disasters, disasters like homelessness would be great candidates to join a co-ed group. Plus, homeless folks get adversely impacted by blizzards too, right? Again, these are just ideas, potential invitations for co-ed membership. So now we're up to community organizations active in. What exactly does active, active mean? mean? Well, let's take a step back and look at what we think about when it comes to disaster preparedness. In the United States, your state, county, parish, territory, or tribal nation, wherever you are, who is the primary person responsible for your life safety day to day? Well, you are. And you were the one responsible for your dependents as well. So again, disaster resiliency or readiness starts before something bad happens. You need to you need take steps, steps and actions for yourself and your family first before you can help others. Then it then really, it really helps, helps to be part of a group that's active in disaster, rather than trying to help on your, on own. your own. Groups provide training, vetting, organization, even possibly insurance, insurance coverage, and other factors which are critical when disasters happen. There, there are, are also awesome. very important roles and actions for volunteer groups to take on after disasters are, are over. over. And what I mean by that is once the snow is cleared or the roads are cleared, people, people can, can hopefully resume their daily activities, but some people are going to need help. Many, Many communities are still recovering from past incidents, in my opinion. And part of this recovery is that your community has not yet moved to mitigation efforts. And if you want to learn more about, about what government needs to do towards that part of the disaster readiness cycle, you can, you can be part, part of your co-ed. You can move the needle. Move, move it, for it for yourself and your family and help move it for your communities. Consider, Consider joining, joining the COAD and work with other non-governmental groups to help them become more disaster ready. ready. When you view disasters on both an all hazard basis, basis and as a full cycle one, there's quite a bit of work for a COAD to do throughout, throughout the, year. the year. They help coordinate training and education for their members on best practices, practices etc. They help organize the various groups to help like-minded groups work together. Part of the COAD VOAD movement is what we call the four C's. Collaboration, coordination, cooperation, and communication. Sounds a little bit better than the four C's of diamonds, right? COADs are also starting points for long-term recovery groups, or LTRGs. And on large-scale disasters, those which get federal presidential declarations, the LTRGs play an important role in community recovery. More on that in another presentation. Coeds need to be sustainable for the next disaster and the one after that, and so forth. And thanks to COVID-19, we now have a new way of looking at the disaster phase cycle. It's really, it's really much more three-dimensional. We can be in response at the same time we are in mitigation, at the same time we are in recovery. There's no more either before, before, during, or after. It can now be everything, everywhere, all at once, like a metaverse kind of, kind of thing. As emergency managers and the public, we need to view the disaster phase cycles differently. Think of it being more like disaster ready, or disaster resilient, as looking like looking through a magnifying glass. Sometimes you focus on one aspect, like response, but other times you pull back and look at more parts, parts or even the entire picture. Here are the things we, as Americans, expect our governments at all levels to do in the response and recovery phases of disasters. And the and areas I circled in red are places where co-eds can and are needed to help government as whole community partners. The items highlighted in yellow, yellow transportation, transportation, logistics, public health and medical services, and cross-sector business, business and infrastructure are areas where specific COAD, state and national level VOAD, VOAD members can help as well. 
And here are the core capabilities that the federal government has defined for disasters, which your state, territory, or tribal nation should have aligned fairly closely to for the full disaster phase cycles. This is the what they do for the when disasters happen. I've highlighted areas, areas where coeds can help as well. In terms of any threat or hazard, government needs, needs to, recognize to recognize that it is responsible to manage 32 different aspects collectively, collectively to benefit life safety primarily, and not just a few of these. And coeds need to understand that government has a lot of plates juggling on sticks before, during, and after disasters. And there are distinct places where the coeds can and should help. For example, coeds and their members can help amplify crisis communications messages to the public, like storm warnings, and provide local context, support, education, resources, etc., beyond what limited government information is put forth. So hopefully now, with a bit of backstage knowledge how of how all those pieces can and should fit together. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of pieces. Let's take a look at the next blizzard as example to hit Buffalo and Erie County. Now is the time for folks in Buffalo, Buffalo and the surrounding communities to prepare by protecting themselves and their families from a blizzard's adverse hazards and preventing life safety threats. And as stated before, think of this as preparedness work on an all-hazard basis, basis, not just for blizzards. Where are the shelters? Which grocery stores are walkable and have generators? These are all essential elements of intelligence you need to find out for yourself, literally block by block, but, but members of a co-ed will hopefully know. For the community to be more prepared for all threats and hazards, including, including, but not limited to blizzards, they need to know where to go to evacuate, and even where to go to shelter in place, and when to go. In the middle of the storm is not the right time, and I'm not faulting any people, people who did this, did. but rather the government who did not fully educate its residents and help protect them from harm's way. You can help yourself and your family while your helping community. your community be it a block association, a town group, or even an entire county, by utilizing the four C's for disaster readiness. And finally, always, always keep in keep mind the Lipper list of priorities, life safety, incident stabilization, property asset protection, environmental economic restoration, and road to recovery in that order, and demand that government, government officials do the same. This is another fundamental principle of emergency management. management unity of effort make government tell, tell you how, how they're spending your tax dollars to protect you and prevent harm from coming to you your and family, your family from hazards and blizzards and whatever if they cannot draw a straight line for, for the expenditures on all that logistics stuff systems sites and staff. staff to protect the life safety of the community well that's a really good indication that they're, they're not providing emergency management these the are the gaps in the safety net where the co-ed needs to fill. It has to fill for us to stay, stay a community. So what's, what's next, next for your for you? organization? You've learned a lot about co-eds. What do you want your organization to do associated with disasters? There are other co-ed members, such as such the as American the Red Cross, who can help. And we can help from our warm, cozy spot, spot here, here in New Jersey, Jersey if you want. Thank you again for watching and listening. Again, my, my name is Mike Prasad, and you can reach me at info at bartondonot.com. And, and you can see our website is at www.bartondonot.com as Thanks, well. Thanks, take care. Thanks, take care.